Hi, we've been talking about the Kernel Blotto game, and the Kernel Blotto game is a way to analyze competition where it's along multiple fronts, and the idea is to strategically mismatch your opponent. What I want to do in this last lecture on Kernel Blotto is expand the discussion a little bit and talk about competition generally. So we can think about firms competing, we can think about sports teams competing, we can think about individuals competing, and what we want to do is think about some of the models we've discussed in these last couple lectures and see how they apply to our understanding of what happens in those competitive environments. Now as we do that, I want to think of two different types of competition. So one type of competition, if you think of, let's say, some auto companies competing for market share, you're going to have a position where each one is going to get some percentage of the market. You know, so GM may get 30 percent, Toyota, Ford may get 20 percent, Toyota may get 20 percent, Chrysler may get 10 percent, and so on, right? So there's more firms down here, smaller firms. So you can think about just competing for market share. You can also think about sports team. This is Serie A. You can think about here's different sports teams, and they're going to have win-loss records. So this team may go 14 and 6. This team may go 7 and 13. Sorry about that, Escoli. You know, each team's going to have a win-loss record, and they're each going to play against each other. So when you think about the data we've got from competition, it could be one of two forms. It could be market share, or it could be sort of win-losses against different teams. And what we want to think about is if we take our different models, can they help us make sense of that competition? And by adjudicating the different models, can we figure out maybe what's really going on in these different environments? Does the auto market look differently than a soccer competition between like a soccer league? So we got a bunch of models. Let's just talk about four. We've got just a pure random model. Performance is random. We've got our skill plus luck model. We've got a finite memory random walk model. And then we've got the blotto model. These are all models that look at competition. So the random model, it's just, you know, you just get a value and it's random who wins. In the skill plus luck, there's a skill component and a luck component. In the finite memory random walk, it's sort of random, but you've got this moving window. And then finally in Blotto, you've got some set of troops and you're allocating them across fronts. So these are all different ways to think about competition, and they all say slightly different things. So what I want to do in this lecture is just just pretty quickly go through each one of them and talk about the different things they say that we'd expect to see, and then we can think about which one of those fits a particular real-world situation best. So let's start with a random model. Suppose performance really is random. That it's like the efficient market hypothesis. So suppose it's the case that who's a good stockbroker really is random. But what should we expect? We should expect equal wins. We should expect no one to be better than anybody else. We should see a lot of regression to the mean. And we should see no time dependency. Someone who's done well this period shouldn't necessarily do well next period. Now, if we look at investment people, if we look at sort of you know, mutual funds, it actually doesn't look unlike this. You know, there's not a lot of time dependency. Who won last year don't, doesn't necessarily determine who's going to win this year. And this may not be a bad model of that. Now, if we contrast that with the skill plus luck, we'd expect to see unequal win, wins. We'd expect to see some people who are consistent winners. So we'd expect sort of semi-consistent rankings with the higher ability people doing better, keeping in mind the paradox of skill. If two people are close in ability, they're going to move back and forth in terms of who does better. But we'd expect to see semi-consistency. And we wouldn't expect to see a huge amount of time dependency in the sense that, like, how I did last period wouldn't have a big influence on what I did this period, you know, given that we know my skill level. So there wouldn't be any correlation in the error terms. And so you can look at some companies, like you could argue that, you know, if you look at industry market shares, that this may be a decent model. Or if you look at, you know, possibly um, some sports competition, this may be a decent model. But we'll see there's other models that might work as well. What about the finite memory random walk? Well, here you're going to have unequal wins, just like we had in the skill plus luck. And we're going to have semi-consistent rankings, because the fact that if you happen to get a bunch of good draws in a row, you're going to continue to get those. You're going to see a lot more time dependency, because it's really going to depend on what you did in the previous time. But where this is going to differ from the skill plus luck model is you're going to get movement from top to bottom. Because in skill plus luck, remember, it's like A times luck plus 1 minus A times skill. And so if you've got high skill, you're always going to stay pretty high. In the finite memory random walk, your value is like XT plus XT minus 1 plus XT minus 2 and so on. Well, after we move ahead 10 periods, your values are going to be all these values that made you good at this point in time will be gone. They'll have been chopped off the end of the random walk. So you're going to see a lot more regression to the mean and more movement from top to bottom in the finite memory random walk model than you would in the skill plus luck model. So again, if you're looking at data within an industry or a sports league and you want to think which one of these is it, this sort of statistical signature is going to be different than what you'd see from the skill plus luck model. 
Okay, what about Blotta with equal troops? So everybody's got equal troops, equal ability. Then the outcomes, this is going to be hard to tell from random. It's going to look a lot like random, but you're going to see lots of maneuvering. Because if it's Blotto, each period everybody's going to be trying to take a random action. And so therefore you're going to see all sorts of trade, all sorts of maneuvering to try and position your troops relative to the troops of other people. But you're not going to, be able to see in the outcome itself any difference between Blotto and random, but you will be able to see it in terms of the actions that people take. What about when there's unequal troops? Well, now it's going to be kind of more like the skill plus luck thing, because if you've got more troops, you're going to be more likely to win. However, because there's going to be maneuvering, sometimes the lesser ability person would win. So statistically, it's going to look a lot like skill luck. However, at the micro level, you're going to see lots and lots of maneuvering. So if you look at something like American football, which has a salary cap, so you can only spend so much on your players, there are teams that have better management and also just happen to have better players that they've signed into contracts. You st and so the outcomes there may look a lot like the skill luck model, but you see tons and tons of maneuvering in professional football, which suggests that, in fact, there may be a blotto-like character to it, where you're trying to get players that help you match up well against the strengths or weaknesses of your opponents. So blotto with unequal troops is going to look somewhat like skill luck, but we're going to see lots of micro-level maneuvering. What if I add in limited movement? What I mean by that is that you can't just sort of reallocate your troops every period. You've actually got to trade resources with someone else, which would be true in a football league, or it'd be true in a firm. We've got to sort of get rid of employees and bring new employees. So you can only move a little bit. Well, if that's the case, if we go back to our example of sort of multiplayer blotto, we should expect to see lots of cycles. We should expect to see where A beats B, B beats C, but C beats A. That's going to be different than the skill luck thing. So in the skill luck model, we may have the case that you know one team wins 70%, one team wins 60, one team wins 50, one team wins 40, one team wins 30. But we won't see a lot of cycles. We won't see consistently A beat B, B beat C, and then C beat A. If it's blotted with limited movement, we should be more likely to see that. But generally, how do we determine? How do we tell whether it's a blotto game or whether it's a skill luck game? Well, one thing to think about this is in terms of dimensionality. If the players are making high dimensional strategic decisions, it's sort of more like Blotto. It's also the case that if it's definitely zero sum, then it's more like Blotto. You could have a skill luck game where we both get better. And so the things we're investing our resources in is just to improve our ability. That's more skill luck like. Whereas in Blotto, it's all about strategically mismatching what we've got against you. And so you can think of high dimensional sports like football, maybe more like Blotto, 100 meter dash, marathon running, things like that maybe more skill luck. Tennis, more like blotto. Javelin throwing, more like skill luck. Let's take a particular case. Let's take the presidential election in the United States and think about how do these different, what do these different models tell us and which one makes the most sense. So I could think that whoever wins the presidential election is just random because it just depends on random shocks to the economy and the winner is just going to depend on those economic shocks. And there's some evidence to support this, but I think that probably doesn't fully capture things. Now, we could say that it's sort of luck and skill, that these candidates have skill. They've got ability to communicate. They've got past experience. And there's also these economic shocks. And again, there's some evidence to support that that's true, that better candidates do seem to win. You could also tell a random walk model. You could say, look, it's not just one random shock to economy. It's a whole bunch of random events. You know, it depends on what's happening in the world economy. It's what's happening in international relations, what's happening domestically, what's happening with social movements at the time. So a whole bunch of random events add up to determine the popularity of the incumbent president or the incumbent party, and that determines who wins. And again, that may not be a bad model. Finally, with Blotto, you can think of it being that, well, there's really this sort of allocation of the troops across fronts. In a presidential election, it's the Electoral College game. You've got to figure out where do we allocate our troops. Now, that captures some of it as well, right? But the thing is, you also think that we've got to have unequal troops because whoever's sort of got more skill or had the good shocks is more likely to, in some sense, need fewer troops on some of those fronts. So what we see by having all these different models is we get many different lenses on what's going on in an election. Now, is any one of these right? No. No, there's not. When you say, oh, presidential elections, those things are just pure luck skill. They're not. They're a combination of all these things. And by having multiple models to look at them, what we do is we have a lens through which we really get a deeper understanding of what's going on. Because where we want to be, right, is we want to be in a place when somebody confronts us with something like, how does a presidential election unfold? That we've got a bunch of frameworks within which we can view that particular event and say, here's what I learned from this framework. So you can say, there's a sense in which the winner of the presidential election is luck. 
because it comes down to economic shocks going their way. Then at the other extreme, you can also say, look, another way to think about these presidential elections, though, is it's this elaborate game of blotto. They're each trying to figure out where to allocate their resources, where to spend their time, where to spend their money, trying to convince voters in an attempt not only to win the Electoral College, but to win different factions of voters, because you can also think of a blotto game playing out on factions of voters. What you get from those two lenses, and plus the other two lenses, is just a much richer understanding of the nature of political competition. It's going to make you better able to predict what's going to happen, and also better able to understand what's going on, and better able to think about how do you design institutions to pick a president. Again, which is one of the things we want to do modeling for. Okay, thank you.